And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each and every week talking to interesting people and discussing some topical ideas. And basketball season will be here before you know it. It's uh, here. Yeah, as a, matter that's, as a matter of fact, it is. They are on the court playing. And uh, we're going to uh, talk today about uh, Oklahoma State University women's basketball and the dramatic turnaround <clears throat> excuse me, that they have experienced in this last year and uh, what lies ahead for them. Kirk Butke is a, a guy that has really done wonders with the Cowgirl program. He'll be here today on The Verdict. Stay with us. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We're just thrilled today to have Kurt Budke, the Oklahoma State University women's basketball coach, with us. Uh, Kurt is a native of uh, Salina, Kansas, did his undergraduate work at Washburn University, he got a master's of science at Wichita State University, and then began what can only be described as a meteoric or extraordinarily successful coaching career. He had nine uh, outstanding years at the junior college level. Uh, took over the Louisiana Tech program and continued that success there and then the, we, he's beginning his second year at Oklahoma State University. Uh, he uh, had a dramatic turnaround last year and I know we're expecting great things from the Cowgirls this year. This is his first visit to the verdict. Kurt, welcome. Thank you all for having me. Appreciate you, uh, appreciate you letting me be here. Well, Kurt, we're glad to have you here. We're taping this show just as practice gets ready to start. Uh, it's going to air just before uh, you get your season started. Uh, tell me what you, you expect going into this season. Do you have every reason to be optimistic? We do. You know, we've uh, last year the NCAA declared us the biggest turnaround in America, and we're very proud of that. Uh, but and we returned three starters from that team, so we're we're excited about our guards out there, and we our, our Big 12 freshman of the year, uh, Andrea Riley, is back at the point guard, so we're excited about that. Uh, Taylor Hardeman from down the road here, Norman is back, and Danielle Green is back. But our the big mystery with our team this year is is uh, what our in, inside play is going to do, and and. Uh, uh, when you have six new players with six returning players, you hope the chemistry is going to be good. We're excited about it. You know, we, we should, as a program now, expect to be in the NCAA tournament um, every single year. I mean, that should be part of our goals now. But our inside people have to come through for us. When you look back at last year, what was the, the one big reason that the Cowgirls were able to, to make such vast improvements? What was it? Well, I, th I think the biggest thing, obviously, you had to upgrade the talent level. Uh, when we took over the program, it, believe me, it was tough that first year going 0-16. You know, we, uh, we knew. When I took the job, I really wasn't sure what I was getting into. Uh, I didn't think it would be 0-16, but it, but it was. And so my assistants went out and did an, did an unbelievable job. You know, think about that now. Go out in this country and recruit to a program that was 0-16 in the Big 12. That's a hard sell. And so Jim Littell, Miranda Cerna, Kenya Larkin, my main three recruiters right there, did, did an unbelievable job. We brought in good talent. 
And, and we lucked out. You know, we went down in Texas and pulled out the Big 12 freshman year and Andrea Riley out of Lincoln High School. And it just happened to be a year where Texas had a returning point and A&M mm -hmm. had a returning point and Baylor had one. And, and she took a chance on a program that was uh, promising things that we were going to try to get done. But uh, she still had to believe, and, and uh, we were lucky to pull her out of there. So the biggest thing was the upgrade of the talent. Obviously, being our second year last year, um, we had a better understanding of the Big 12 and what we needed to, to succeed in the Big 12. So all those things factored in. And then a little luck came into play, too. And, and you know, we, we sat there last year at 5-8 and eight and had to win our last three games to even have a chance at the NCAA tournament. And we go down to Texas and win. Uh, we beat number 25 Nebraska at home, and then have to go to a tough Kansas State and win there to even have a chance. And the girls just came together and, and uh, came through. Well, talk about the uh, turnaround season from the standpoint of the morale. Uh, what kind of effect on morale of your existing players it had? Well, you know, the, the biggest thing we had to teach of the players that were back was how to win, what it took every day in practice to to be committed enough, that commitment to excellence, to go out every day and expect to have a great practice and walk in a gym and expect to win. And the, the ones that were there at 0-16 and the ones that were there last year, um, I think it was the, probably the best year of their life. And if you ask those girls that, they'll, they'll tell you that. It, uh, it, it's tough to go from dead last and, and kind, of a, kind of a joke of the conference, to be honest with you, when you can't win a game to uh, being able to go out and win on the road and beat a great Iowa State team at Iowa State. We were the only team to do that last year, to beat Texas at Texas. Um, so those girls have a lot of pride now, and the expectations have certainly changed. Well, it's one thing to talk about turnaround, it's something else to do it, and you've, you've obviously done it, and you're now on the, on the upswing, I'm sure. Talk about how the turnaround affects your recruiting. Well, there, there's no question that it helped us get in more doors. And, and now when you call high school coaches or AU coaches, they know now, they saw you in the NCAA tournament. You know, Lindy's uh, basketball magazine just came out about a month ago and they had us preseason ranked 23rd. Now, you know, that, that's good for the players, it's good for the fans. Me as a coach of 23 years, I know that the only poll that matters is one at the end of the year, but it does help recruiting. It does help you get in some doors. and. And let's people know, players want to go where you have a chance to be in the big dance. They, mm -hmm. they don't want to go and, and uh, go 4-12 and 12 and, and not even get into the NIT or things like that. So it's definitely helped. Um, we still haven't been able to pull in that, that top 10 recruit yet. But I think this, that's just part of the steps that we take right now. We find those players that aren't afraid of that top 10 recruit, that want to play in that top 10 recruit, and want to play in the Big 12. And uh, that's how we're going to continue to build our success. Do you recruit nationally? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I mean, we'll, we'll go coast to coast. But I think uh, one of the things that the great Leon Barmore taught me at Louisiana Tech was you need to try to control the four states on your borders. And, and I think that's true. If you look at a lot of teams' rosters, the success they have is are the recruits that were within driving distance, and especially in girls now, because girls don't want to get too far from their parents most of the time. Uh, so, you know, you have to have good relationships with the high school coaches and the AU coaches that are close. Well, how, how was your most recent recruiting class? Can you talk about that a little bit? We, we sure can. We're, you know, we had to bring in six new players. And so we felt last year that if we had one weakness on the team, that we, when Andrea came out of the game from the point guard position, that we had no answer. And uh, we had to shut down everything that we want to do as far as pressure and, and pushing the tempo and things like that. So we went out and we signed uh, Shante Walters, who was at Seward County, uh, who was who a sophomore transfer. So we'll have her for three years. She led her team to a 33-3 and record and third in the nation at Seward County last year as a point guard. So we feel very good about bringing her in as a backup for Andrea. And also, she gives us the luxury of moving Andrea to the two at times because Andrea can really score. So we, we feel a lot better about that. Uh, Taylor Booz out of Duncanville, Texas, uh, is, a, is a backup point guard. Kristen Hernandez, who we signed out of Duncanville also, uh, was the MVP of the Texas All-Star game this summer as yeah. a 2-3 position. So, uh, you know, we definitely got a lot deeper in, in the guard position. And then in, in the post, again, this, this is our biggest mystery. You know, Megan Byford is a transfer from Northern Oklahoma 
who, uh, uh, she's from down the road at Bray Doyle, big, strong young lady, 6'2", uh, you know, 200 pounds, 210, that uh, we hope can get, a, get in there and push around some people that, uh, that you have to be able to do in the Big 12. Shyvon Spears comes in as a transfer, too. So we like the class. Again, it's missing that top 10 recruit, but we think we found a level of young ladies that can compete in the Big 12. We're going to take a break. I want to get back and, and talk to you about attendance. Did it pick up at the end of last year when you all started winning? And how does that springboard into higher attendance figures here in the upcoming season? We're visiting with Kirk Butke. He's the head basketball coach of the Oklahoma State Cowgirls in Stillwater. We'll be right back. You're watching The Verdict. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Big Cordette with Kent Myers and Oklahoma State women's basketball coach Kurt Butke. You started winning more games at the end of last year. More people started paying attention. Suddenly more people are buying tickets. Uh, what was the response in Stillwater and how the team uh, was, was treated by the fans? I think maybe the first thing was shock. You know, <laughs> was that this team went from 0-16 to now, you know, a little bit of a contender. And, um, you know, there's great basketball fans at Oklahoma State. You know, the men have proven that for years and years and years. And, and uh, I've told the girls from day one that we have to earn the respect of our fans and our students. I think our students are, is, is big to our program. But um, I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there. You know, I think if you look across the board at what OU and Texas and Baylor and Texas Tech and those people are doing right now, tenants wise that's the one area that we have to get better at mm -hmm. at Oklahoma State. Well, you have a product to market. How is that going heading into this season? I, I, they, I've had people come up to me off the street and said, you know, I've never bought women's basketball tickets before I'm coming. I came maybe for that last game in Nebraska against Nebraska last year. A lot of people came out. Other people that have come have kind of spread the word. I'll be, I haven't heard any numbers yet, you know, and I don't think you're going to jump from 3,000 to 10,000. But right. if you can put just five to 6,000 consistently every night that we play it in Gallagher-Iver, that's enough. Be we're we're going to win a lot of games. Yeah. Well, uh, what, how do you see the Big 12 Conference race shaping up this year? Well, I think, um, you know, you look at Texas A&M, first of all, who has everybody back off a team that, um, you know, finished first last year. And, and OU, I think those two are, are kind of above everybody, but I don't think they're out of reach. I think they're very beatable, but I think they're definitely the favorites in the Big 12. And, and then, you, then you go straight to Baylor, who has obviously has great success and a great coach down there, and then probably Texas. And then I think once you get to Baylor and Texas and Oklahoma State, I think there's a lot of teams that can finish in that area. Um, but. Uh, as you look at as you look at Baylor, as you, as I talk about these teams, what what's the common thing? They're on the Big 12 South. Yeah. So yeah, I noticed that, that. You know that magazine <laughs> we talked about the other day. We we're ranked 23rd, but there's four teams in the South ahead of us. My goodness. So, fifth so in, five teams in the South. Fifth were in the overranked. division. 
fifth in division, you know, but 23rd in the country. And so we, you know, our conference RPI was two last year. We've got great coaches. We've got Hall of Fame coaches. So it's hard to take too much of a, of, of a jump right now. Mm -hmm. But we feel we're just a little bit closer, but it, the league is going to be unbelievable again. I would guess that uh, with, with luck and with uh, some good playing, uh, you'll end up in the NCAA tournament this year. How is the tough conference schedule you have to play? How does that prepare you or hurt you, whichever is true, in the NCAA? You know, I think there's, uh, there's probably conferences that are a little better at the top, maybe ACC, maybe SEC at the top. But as we go 1 through 12, the Big 12, I think, is by far the best. You don't have a night off, ever have a night off. There's no game that you can look at. Well, two years ago, we were everybody's night off, but okay, that, that's done now. So, uh, you know, so there's no night offs anymore. So it does prepare you for the tournament. It does also beat you down now as you travel in this league and, and, and play the tough physical competition that you have every night. You know, hopefully it does prepare you for the NCAA tournament. And, and uh, you know, but there's no way people ask me where we think we're going to finish. There's just no way to predict when you're in the Big 12 South and you have to play those teams twice in the South that you can say, oh, I think we're going to go 10 and 6 and be better than we were last year. You can't do that. So um, the, the league is great. This is what I asked for. I wanted to come to what I thought was the best league in the country and compete. And, you know, I promise you our girls are excited about it. You've been coaching uh, for quite a while now, and the game has evolved. I think we're a generation past the six-on-six -six basketball, and that's obviously no longer a factor. These, these girls' uh, mothers all played you know, five-on-five -five basketball right. now, so we've we moved beyond that. But what trends are there that have you seen since you started coaching that, that have brought us up to 2007 and the high level of caliber that women play basketball today? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is the AU basketball in the summer, and the girls are playing year-round right now. The girls are getting bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, people that haven't given women's basketball a chance need to give it a chance again because it's unbelievable athletes out there. If you looked at uh, anybody that got to watch the national championship game of Tennessee and Rutgers last year saw just unbelievable athleticism. They see the girls are getting bigger. I mean, Tennessee across the board was 6'5", 6'4", 6'2", 6'1", and that's what people don't understand until they come see it in person, how athletic these girls are. But I think, you know, playing year-round has definitely changed the game and is going to continue to change the game. It, we're just, uh, our, the best days of women's basketball are definitely ahead of us. Went to a smaller ball a few years ago. That seems to have helped. Oh, it definitely does. I, I, think, I think that was one of the best decisions ever made because now the girls are, are shooting a foot or two behind the line now. Mm -hmm. And that three-point line is a big part of our game. And the three-point line was moved. Was that just in the men's game that it was moved? Is the women's three-point line staying the same? You know, the, the, men, the women are staying the same, and they're, trying, they're discussing on how to make the lines now. Are they going to make just one big thick line, and the front part of it's ours, and the back part of it's the men? Are they going to put two lines out there? And So that's all part that uh, we're going to see this year. Okay. What about facilities, either new facilities you have or what's on the drawing board? Well, the facilities obviously are very exciting at Oklahoma State right now for all sports. And uh, with basketball, we don't need much change. We have uh, Gallagher Ive, I think, is one of the greatest arenas in America, definitely in the Big 12. And our practice facility is, is connected right there, and it's beautiful, and it's, it's, uh, it's easy access. So we don't really need any changes. Uh, I think we're going to get a new locker room for women's basketball and men's basketball. So that's part of the change that's going to happen. But we really don't even need that. Our locker room is great right now. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're fine. You know, the other sports, uh, you know, are going to get new facilities and obviously the football facility. If you haven't seen that lately, you need to come see what's happening right there because it's, it's going to make it one of the best in the country. What about practice courts? Do you have practice courts? Yes, our, our practice court is, is right, right there. So the, the good thing about that is we get to... Uh, we get to practice every day when we want to practice. Yeah. And so there's no, you know, the men take the main floor one day, we take it the next day. We just change it out every single day. But it lets the girls stay in a good schedule of, let's say it's, you know, three to six or three to five every day. And they, they, can, they can schedule all their tutors and facilitators and all, that, all those things around uh, practice because it's going to be consistent. The WNBA, how has that affected women's basketball in general and college basketball? Oh, it's no question it's helped. They have role models to look up to. They have, uh, you know, the Lisa Leslie's and the Tarassi's and people that are playing. You know, the money's not great in the WNBA, but uh, that, that, that doesn't matter. 
the girls now can go to a pro basketball game and they can they can uh, watch their pro teams on TV like little boys did forever and ever like I did you know back in the day also and and so it's uh, it, it's not something where you know the men's the men still think about the NBA as a way to make a, a great living. You know, I'm going to be a millionaire if I get drafted. Where the women, you know, education is still very, very important to, to these young ladies because the WNBA is just going to pay the bills for a little while and that education is going to pay for life. We just have about 30 seconds left, but uh, tell us about how you and your family have uh, melded into the Stillwater community. Easiest transition we've ever made. I mean, it has just been unbelievable. The people in Stillwater, have, have been very accepting to my, you know, my daughter moved, you know, she's a senior now, but she was just a sophomore. That's yeah. a tough age for young women. Yeah. And, and, and she found more friends and, and they uh, opened their arms to my boys and, and my daughter and my wife. And we just couldn't be happier. This, this is a place that we want to be the rest of our life. Kirk Butke, Oklahoma State women's basketball coach. Thanks for being on The Verdict. Yeah, thank, thank you all you. for having and me. Tell Shante Smith hello. I sure will. Won't I be sure at the will. end of this year, but the Big 12 uh, basketball tournaments will be back in Oklahoma City at the end of 2009. We look forward to the, to the Cowgirls. I wish it was here every year. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Kenton, I'll have a final word after this. comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers back on The Verdict. We are wrapping up the show with Oklahoma State women's basketball coach Kurt Bubke, and there is every reason to have confidence in them where this program is headed. Oh, yes, the dramatic turnaround last year from the year before and uh, the talent level that they have uh, improved, uh, the enthusiasm. This Coach Bubke has got something, a magic elixir or something that uh, is making his uh, – his uh, coaching tenure really spectacular. You look back at his uh, careers and as junior college coach, community college coach, and then his tenure at Louisiana Tech, and the guy is just one with an amazingly high level of, of efficiency. Well, he does year, year year after year after year, and he's not just uh, not just finishing 16 and 14. He's finishing 28 and two and yeah. things like that. I mean, it's just astounding just, the kind of record. It is, and as you say, over and over again. So I think. Uh, uh, Oklahoma State's got a lot to look forward to uh, for an exciting year and uh, and not just this year but years to come. You can see he's a coach that believes in recruiting. He's, he talks about his assistant coaches being out there and, and, and trying to bring in top players to Stillwater and with all the improvements that are being made to the athletic facilities at Oklahoma State you just got to think that uh, all of that's got to help uh, and, uh, and every reason to be optimistic if you're an Oklahoma State women's basketball fan. And we appreciate him driving down from Stillwater on a rainy day to do this show with us. <laughs> Absolutely. And I want to give you some uh, website information. If you'd like to see more about uh, Oklahoma State Athletics, you can go to okstate.com and then follow your way to uh, Oklahoma State's uh, women's basketball website. And then you can check out our website at theverdict.tv. Go there, tell us about a show you'd like to see on an upcoming episode of The Verdict. We'll see you then.
The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.